It's football. I've been watching it for 40 years. Are you kidding me? You're listening to Winning Cures Everything. Game day, baby. Wake up or get out. Here's your host. A confident young man. A superb athlete. Gary Seegers. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. It is the Thursday, December 29th show. I am your host, Gary Seegers. You can follow me on Twitter, at GaryWCE. Uh, I am recording this on December 22nd. We are about to get a, a polar freeze. All kinds of things are going on. So, uh, got to record early. I'm going to be doing some traveling over uh, the Christmas break, etc. Don't know if I will be in a position to be able to record or not. Uh, so, I wanted to at least get these game breakdowns out. Uh, we already know the matchups. I've got some current lines. Uh, so, we're going to go on and do this thing. So, why not just go on and get started? Uh, let me go on and tell you. The show was brought to you by BetUS. It's America's premier online sports book. Fantastic customer service. Incredibly quick payouts. These guys are the best at what they do. And, of course... They are where the game begins, and along with that, you can also get, now you guys, you guys are going to love this, a $50 free play with no deposit required. So over bowl season, once we're getting into the college football playoff, etc., you want to be involved with the playoff, go ahead and make sure that you get your $50 free play, no deposit required, by signing up at the link that's in the description. That's right. We've got a description down there, or a link down there in the notes, in the show notes, Whatever you want to call it. But go ahead and get that taken care of. Get yourself signed up over at BetUS. Uh, I host the BetUS College Football Show. It's every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure that you are subscribed over there, and uh, and our best bets will be over there. So go ahead and check that out as well. Uh, in the regular season, I was 89-77 and 77 against the number. Uh, no idea what my bowl record is thus far. Uh, because of when we are recording this, etc. So uh, just uh, take that with a grain of salt. What I'm basically giving you is my lean or which way I would play in every game if it were a pick em, like a bowl pick em or something along those lines, right? So if you want to know what I think about it, that's what we're doing here. So let's go on and dive into the first game here. And hey, you know what? Let's, uh, let's play a little tunage. Yeah, we'll just put on some mood music in the background. The Music City Bowl is Iowa and Kentucky. Now, these two played in a bowl last year that Kentucky ended up winning 20-17, to 17, if I'm not mistaken. Now, at the time, they had Wondell Robinson. They had uh, Will Levis, etc. Neither one of those are going to be playing this year. Uh, Iowa has got a bunch of guys sitting out as well. It's just going to be all over the place. So, uh, let's just take a stab at the, at the numbers. Uh, Iowa is currently favored by two with a total of 31. That's right. That is a super, super low number. It's Saturday, December 31st, 11 a.m. Central Time on ABC. So uh, that is certainly something to pay attention to. Uh, going to be a good time to watch bowl games. So that one will be on linear television uh, on ABC. My numbers have Kentucky favored by 0. .42 points. Now here's the issue. The model does not allow for me to take out individual players. So I don't think Petrus is playing. I don't think that Will Levis is playing. There's like, there's guys all over the place that are going to be sitting out this game in Nashville. And so there's no real way to quantify exactly what these, uh, what these numbers mean. We know that the Iowa offense is not very successful. They're number 104 in offensive success rate since week eight. And that that's when they actually got a little bit better, right? They were, they were not good uh, to say the least. So, uh, looking at this, like Kentucky's offense was not very good either. Number 105 PPA per drive. They were number 115 in offensive success rate. Now, both defenses are pretty good, but Iowa's is significantly better. I got to tell you, I, I don't know how Kentucky scores here. Like I know Kentucky's got more talent overall on their roster, uh, but that Iowa defense is legit. I don't think Phil Parker gets the uh, gets the love that he deserves. And I know that I talk about him all the time. I just don't know if other people do. Uh, when I look at this, like number eight PPA per rush, their number uh, nine in offensive line yards on defense is Iowa. Uh, they're number 13 against the pass. Uh, you know, the offense is not anything to write home about. But when you start looking at turnover margin, et cetera, like Iowa's number 16 in turnover margin, Kentucky is number 55. That's a huge difference in the game. I expect that to go Iowa's way. Uh, points per play margin 
a, a huge difference here. Um, Iowa number 37 and Kentucky number 63. Uh, look, I'm just going to go on and, and spell it out for you. I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm thinking here because I expect I expect Iowa to win this game, and I, I, I just don't know how Kentucky's going to score. Iowa, I think, will be able to score via special teams, defense, etc. Kentucky hasn't really shown a bunch of that this year. I know against Florida and everybody else, like, they, they've had a few spots. But I, I really like Iowa to be able to get this done here. Um, and to give me Iowa to cover the two on this one. Moving along, we're going to the Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl has Alabama and Kansas State. The tide is favored by six on this. The total is 56. It's on Saturday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, of course. This one also at 11 a.m. Central Time. And this one's on ESPN. It's one of those New Year's Six Bowls. It's it's whatever deal that they've got going on right now. Um, so let's go on and, and pull up some numbers and look at uh, what, the, what the numbers say here. So these numbers are from week eight through the end of the regular season. And they would have Alabama favored by 12.38 points. That's a lot. Uh, Bryce Young is going to play. Will Anderson is going to play. That's a huge deal, right? So I, Alabama not expected to have any opt-outs other than Javian Cohen on the offensive line. And I don't know that he's not replaceable. So I don't know. It, really, this is it, this comes down to motivation. Right, if Alabama wants to be there, they should be able to cover this six. Kansas State really, really good this year on offense, especially towards the end of the season. Their defense eh, leaves a little bit to be desired. They are number fifty-two in stuff rate. They are number seventy-five in offensive line yards. Alabama's running game is not great, but when you go up against an average uh, run-stopping team, that offensive line can get a little bit of a push there. It's it's different playing Kansas State than it is to play against. LSU or Texas A&M or whatever. It's it's just a different beast. That's nothing against Kansas State. I'm just talking about different talent levels. Okay. Uh, now, when you look at this, Kansas State's offense, number 10 PPA per pass. The surprising thing here is that they are not great at running the football, especially at the end of the year. Right? Number 65 PPA per pass, number 59 rushing success rate. And Alabama's numbers are not good. But they've also gone up against some run-heavy teams in Auburn and Ole Miss towards the end of the season. And that's going to skew those numbers a little bit. So, eh, it's it's a little little different. When you look at standard down PPA, like which teams can stay ahead of the chains, etc. Uh, Alabama's defense is number seven standard downs PPA, and their defense is number seven in standard or excuse me, number fifty in standard down success. Well, Kansas State is number sixty-two in PPA and number sixty-four in standard down success. Like they they're not staying. Uh, over anybody. Like, that's the surprising thing. So, I, yeah, they can throw the football. They don't They do not do it all the time. It's like 46% of the time. But that's the thing that Alabama's the best at. Alabama's number one in PPA per pass since week eight of the season. So if that's the way that you're going to attack them with Will Howard at quarterback, eh, you might have to come up with something a little bit different, right? Um I, I look at this, you're looking at points per play margin, number four against number 12, net points per drive, Alabama number four against Kansas State number uh, 22. You look at uh, strength of schedule, Alabama's number nine, Kansas State number 16. Like this, all of this seems to point Alabama's way. Yes, Alabama did underperform. Went 0-3-1, and I think, in the last four games uh, against the number. Um... But this number was kind of artificially deflated based on what everybody thought they knew, and now it's come back up a little bit. This number should be over a touchdown, and it's still sitting under a touchdown at the time that I'm recording this. So, if you're giving me the option here, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Alabama on this one. I, I expect the Tide to be able to roll here. Give me, give me Alabama minus the six in the Sugar Bowl. All right, moving along. We have, uh, we're headed into the good stuff. The Fiesta Bowl, college football playoff semifinal number one, TCU and Michigan. Michigan currently a seven and a half point favorite. 
Total sits at 58 and a half over at BetUS. This one, of course, Saturday, December 31st, New Year's Eve. It is at 3 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. And hey, why don't we go on and pull up the numbers so you can see what we are looking at. I have Michigan favored by over 12 points here. Uh, part of this has to do with the team strength, where CFB Winning Edge has got TCU number 10, Michigan number 4. Uh, but the biggest part here is not so much strength of schedule or anything like that. It is Michigan is a team full of bullies. This Michigan defense is legit. The Michigan offensive line is legit. And that is a big, big issue for TCU. TCU number 73 PPA per rush uh, from week 8 of the season on. Uh, they are number 70 in rushing success rate. Michigan number 17 and number 23. This team lost Blake Corum for the rest of the season and did not skip a beat. Donovan Edwards is legit. You look at all these numbers, like offensive red zone conversion percentage, TCU is number 80 with 81%. Uh, Michigan is number 5, 93.75%. You look at uh, scoring opportunities per game, points per scoring opportunity, Michigan's offense, number 35 TCU's defense is number 81 in points per scoring opportunity. Uh, you move to the other side, TCU's offense, number 76 in points per scoring opportunity, and Michigan's defense is number 7, giving up only 2.78 every time another team gets inside their 40-yard line. This is a big, big deal. Uh, I I look at, you know, PPA margin. Like, TCU certainly fell off towards the end of the season. Like, they just, they could not maintain that. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that they did not get a break from week three of the year on. That was their bye week. Like, that's insane, right? The scheduling dynamic this year was certainly against the Horned Frogs, and yet they, they got through it 12-0 and before they got to the Big 12 title game. But then you saw in the Big 12 title game that they lost. It took some Max Duggan heroics in that game to even get them to overtime. We can quabble back and forth about whether or not he uh, broke the plane of, of the end zone um, <laughs> in overtime. But regardless, we, uh, we ain't going to do that here. Michigan has been pretty dominant. Like, once they got past Illinois, they headed towards Ohio State. They whipped them. They handled Purdue as well. They have got big plays just waiting. They just kind of lean on you, lean on you, lean on you until you get to the second half, and you got nothing left in the tank. And then somebody bust out a big play. Kind of feel like that's what they're going to be able to do here. Like, yeah, you look at these two teams, it's it's very similar uh, to what they're going to be, or what they did do, what Michigan did do against Purdue, against Ohio State, against other teams this year, right? At number six in PPA margin is Michigan since week eight of the season. TCU is number 54. Offensive success rate, TCU is number 88 right now. Uh, Michigan, number 29. Like Michigan's defense, number 27, and defensive success rate allowed. And TCU, number 57. Like The problem is, like again, TCU's rushing success rate allowed, number 70. I don't think that's going to hold up well here. I, I like I like the Wolverines. I, I like Michigan quite a bit to be able to cover by 7.5. Uh, I just I think this should be a double-digit spread. Just, just to guess. Just to guess here. All right, the Peach Bowl. Let's move on to, hey, you know what? Let's hit that on the other side. Let's go on and knock this thing out. On the other side, we got the Peach Bowl, the ReliaQuest Bowl. That's right, the Mississippi State Bulldogs and Illinois. Man, we, uh, we got the cotton all coming up right after this. Let's check out some things you should know about. College football is back, and BetUS TV has you covered. Every Tuesday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we've got expert game analysis to help you make informed decisions before kickoff, only on the BetUS TV College Football Channel. Visit winningcureseverything.com to find everything you need to know about us, including full shows in video or podcast form, gambling picks, merch, the gear we use, and more. If you want more content from me, Gary, visit betustv.com. I host the How to Gamble on Sports Show and, from August through January, the BetUS College Football Show. You can subscribe to both on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or whatever's your favorite podcast app. And if your app allows it, leave a five-star written review. Visit the Winning Cures Everything web store to get all kinds of football shirts, hats, hoodies, mugs, and more. Visit winningcureseverything.com slash store to see what all we've added. And now, back to the show. 
All right. Let me go on and tell you right quick about Valtimary Surf Company. They are a collegiate town clothing apparel line, and they are fantastic. The material on the shirts, incredibly comfortable. I highly, highly recommend these guys. You go and check them out, valtamarysurfco.com. There's a link in the description that you can click, and that uh, that certainly helps me out. But uh, but you can use the promo code Gary10, G-A-R-Y-1-0. It's going to give you 10% off of your order. Again, I highly recommend it. These guys are super nice. They will do custom orders for you for if your college town is not listed. But uh, I've got a couple of Tuscaloosa Surf Company shirts. Highly recommend it. Go and check them out. Valtimary Surf Co. All right. Let's start the music back. The Peach Bowl with Ohio State and Georgia. Georgia, a seven point favorite. The total sits at 62.5 over at BetUS. It is Saturday, December 31st. Again, New Year's Eve. And this is the late one. This is the 7 p.m. Central Time game on ESPN, standalone window. Ohio State, not exactly used to being in the underdog role, but they are. 18 4 and 1 against the spread when they are an underdog of three points or more. That's crazy. Like just looking back over over the years, anytime they've been an underdog of more than a field goal, they're covering at a just ridiculous clip. The issue is that Georgia, last three times they've been a favorite by less than 10 points, they have just blown teams out of the water. Like they have covered at a ridiculous rate. So we look at this, uh, Georgia favored by seven here. I'm just going to pull up the numbers for you so that you can see exactly what we're looking at. And the overall numbers have actually got uh, Ohio State favored by 4.47. Now, the way that this number works is based on plays per game. It's based on uh, net points, points per play, like et cetera, et cetera. The, the points per play... For Ohio State is absurd for their offense. 0.65 points per play for them. And they run 67.67 plays on offense. Uh, it's These two teams are pretty much mirror images. But over the last, you know, uh, six weeks of the regular season, Georgia had a, you know, a couple of spots here and there that weren't great. Uh, this dates back to, I think, when Georgia was playing against Missouri, if I'm not mistaken. Might be a little bit after that. But yeah, either way. Either way, it doesn't really matter because my number has Ohio State favored by four or close to four and a half. I don't trust the number. My number had Ohio State favored uh, fairly significantly over Michigan. I don't trust it. I've seen the offensive and defensive lines for Ohio State. I do not believe that they can hang with Georgia. Like that's a, There's no number on here that you can get to that's going to make me believe that that Ohio State can mash with them in the trenches. Georgia will lean on them and lean on them and lean on them. They'll rely on Milton and some of those other guys in the running back room. I know that Ohio State's defense is really good against running backs and tight ends coming out of the backfield to catch passes. Okay, like I think Stetson Bennett is going to be able to find A.D. Mitchell. Like They have had plenty of time to be able to get those wide receivers healthy. Georgia's got pieces everywhere. And yes, so does Ohio State. But don't forget, they've also got a bunch of skill position injuries here. They have got um, uh, the wide receiver issue is a big one with Jackson Smith and Jigba. He's gone. Uh, Travion Henderson is not going to play. Uh, who knows about Mayan Williams? It's not a good time to not be healthy. I will say that. And Ohio State has already gotten mashed once at home. Now, granted, it was a little bit of a different situation. They stopped Michigan on basically 90% of the plays. Uh, but they had, <laughs> they had like five huge ones. Well, here's the thing: Georgia can can be explosive as well. Like it's it's kind of an issue. So you look at pass explosiveness: Georgia's offense number 64, Ohio State number 99. Rushing explosiveness: Georgia number 66, Ohio State's defense number 113. Could be a bit of an issue here. So you look at Ohio State's offense. Uh, the numbers are not great. Just not not overall efficient, great. Number 86 PPA per rush, number 73 rushing success rate. Going up against that Georgia defense, eh, that ain't going to work. Georgia number 5 and number 14 respectively in those. You look at the passing game, Ohio State number 37 in PPA per pass. That's predicted points added per pass since week 8. Passing success rate number 70. C.J. Stroud, just, it all kind of fell 
not I'm not fell apart. Obviously, they're still doing pretty well. It's that they're they're not great. We expected them to be great. When you're when you're missing out on guys, that's kind of an issue. You look at points per scoring opportunity. You look at a bunch of other stuff. Like it, one of the big issues here, points per scoring opportunity, uh, as far as Ohio State's defense, they're number ninety. Georgia's offense is number thirty-eight. Ohio State's offense is number thirty in points per scoring opportunity. That's drives inside the opponent forty-yard line. At Georgia's defense is number twenty-one. Like red zone conversion percentage, like that's that's a problem for uh, for Ohio State. They they give up ninety-one percent of their red zone conversions uh, to the opposing team. That's not good. That's number one twenty. Georgia is number one. Like they only allow sixty percent of red zone conversions. Uh, Georgia number one offensive red zone conversion percentage. Ohio State number four on offense. Like I, I'm going to trust Georgia here to be able to get this done. I know the number's big, and I know that my number goes against that. But I ain't trusting the model. You're gonna have to give me Ohio State some other time, because right now uh, I'm rolling with the dogs. Give me Georgia. Georgia to cover seven against Ohio State. All right, now. Let's move into the Relia Quest Bowl. I want to, I want to swap that thing over. The Relia Quest Bowl is at Mississippi State uh, with the new coach Zach Arnett playing in honor of Mike Leach on this one. Of course, there is a pirate ship in the stadium at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. Uh, Illinois is the opponent, and this has come back down to a pick'em. The total is 46. It's on Monday, January 2nd, 11 a.m. Central Time on ESPN2. Let's fire into it. Let's see what we got. I've got Mississippi State favored by 4.75, but when you look at what their offense has been doing, it has been abysmal towards the end of the season. These numbers are from week eight on. Number 117 PPA per pass, even though they're throwing the ball 73% of the time. They're number 110 in passing success rate. And, I mean, that is just awful. Uh, number 115 PPA per rush. Number 115 in rushing success rate. Illinois, their defense is fantastic. Like, it, it just, no. No, no, no. Um, you look at, at Mississippi State's defense. Like, don't get me wrong. Illinois' offense is not great either, especially from week eight of the season on. Chase Brown is who they rely on. Well, they've been number 120 in PPA per rush. A lot of this has to do with strength of schedule, by the way. But Illinois, number 120 PPA per rush, number 103 in rushing success rate. Well, Mississippi State's defense, number 8 in rushing success allowed, number 25 in PPA per rush allowed. That's predicted points added uh, per rush. And so you got two really good defenses here. You got you look at points per play margin, like Illinois is way up on that one. Net points per drive, Illinois way up on that. Penalties per game is pretty equal. Turnover margin, Illinois is number 2. Mississippi State is number 50. The, there's a lot of reasons for me to lean Ohio State here. Or excuse me, Illinois here. God, got the last game on my brain. Um, there's there's nothing that you could point to numbers wise that would make me go any way other than Mississippi State here. The amount of emotion that these guys will be playing with, it's going to be through the roof. Like there's there's no other way to explain it. So I'm going to have to take Mississippi State here at a pick. Um, I think I think before bowl season I might would have rolled with uh, with Illinois, but with what happened, you know, rest in peace, Mike Leach, Zach Arnett's first game. Yeah, I think these kids are going to be fired up for this one. Yeah, give me give me Mississippi State with a pick'em. All right, moving right along, we've got the Cotton Bowl. Got to write my time down here, of course. The Cotton Bowl in Dallas, Texas, has got the Tulane Green Wave and the USC Trojans. USC currently a two and a half point favorite. The total is 62 over at BetUS currently. Right again, I am recording this on the 22nd. So uh, it's Monday, January 2nd at 12 p.m. Central Time on ESPN. This number has kind of fluctuated a little bit. It's gone back and forth just a touch. Tulane has never had, excuse me, has never gotten to a point where they were favored in this game, but that's okay. Uh, 
you look at the numbers from week eight of the season on, I think a lot of people would be surprised that USC is less than a field goal favorite over Tulane. But Tulane is really good. You look at their strength of record, you look at their PPA margin, which their predicted points added margin is significantly better than what USC has, and that all has to do with USC's defense. That defense is atrocious. Number 127 PPA per drive on defense uh, since week eight of the season here. That's what these numbers are, by the way. The thing that you need to pay attention to the most, Tulane, number 14 PPA per rush, USC, number 123 on defense in that metric. Tulane, number 29 rushing success rate, at USC number 127. Ty J Spears is going to have a field day against this defense. Like they may not have, Michael Pratt may not have to throw the football at all, and they'll still be able to put up points here. The issue that you run into is if Caleb Williams is healthy, Tulane's defense has not fared great against mobile quarterbacks. You could see the difference in UCF playing at Tulane just a few weeks ago. Or I'd say a few weeks ago, back in week. 10 or 11 or whatever it was, when you had a healthy John Reese Plumley, that quarterback ran for like 176 yards on them. UCF won the ball game 38 to 31, but they were up by multiple touchdowns early because they couldn't figure out what to do against a mobile quarterback. Well, once John Reese Plumley was down with a hamstring injury in the AAC championship game, you got you got nothing after that. So of course Tulane won that ball game and, and won it rather handily. It's kind of kind of the same situation here. If Caleb Williams is not dealing with a hamstring injury, then USC will be able to score pretty much at will on this defense. PPA per rush for Tulane, number 107. Uh, they are number 96 rushing success rate allowed on defense. Well, USC is number 18 predicted points added per rush and number 6 in rushing success rate since week 8. They're number 4 PPA per pass. Now, Tulane's pass defense is pretty good. They've got a good secondary, especially for an AAC team. That's just overall college football really good. They're number 19 PPA per rush, number 30 in passing success rate allowed. This all comes down to, to me, is Caleb Williams healthy? Right now, I'm going to bank that he's not because that looked like a pretty serious injury. Right, give me give me Tulane here. Uh, Tulane is, is really good. These two teams are a lot more equally matched than you would think, uh, especially in the trenches. Like Tulane's got a, a better team strength to me, than USC does, even though the numbers say Tulane number 20 and USC number 13. I think at the line of scrimmage, Tulane has got some hog mollies. They got some dudes. So give me Tulane. I think they win this game outright. Give me the plus two and a half here. All right. Let's hit uh, Let's hit one more ad on the backside. We're going to hit the last two bowl games. We've got the Citrus Bowl and the Rose Bowl. Uh, obviously, we will do the college football playoff. Uh, or excuse me, the college football national championship game later on closer to that game but uh but for now let's hit this we'll do lsu purdue and penn state utah on the backside let's check out some things you should know about follow the show on twitter at winning cures and you can follow gary at gary wce you can also follow on facebook got your own podcast or web show looking to start one or you're just curious how we look and sound so good well, we've got all the gear that we use listed on our gear page on the website. If you order using our links, you'll be supporting the show, too. Subscribe on YouTube to get not only full Winning Cures Everything shows, but individual segments and other goodies as well. We're over 6,000 subscribers, and our goal by the end of the year is 7,500. If you're interested in advertising on a show that reaches over 80,000 unique football fans per month during the season, send an email to Gary at winningcureseverything.com and we'll put together a plan that best fits you or your business. And now, back to the show. All right, let me tell you about Flow Sports really quick. Flow Sports has got... We'll turn on the music for this one. Flow Sports has 25,000 different sports matches. Uh, Division three football. They got a bunch of college basketball. They've got MMA. They got wrestling. They got golf. They got uh, a pickleball, from what I understand. I might be incorrect about that. But either way, you can check it out for yourself by going over to flowsports.tv. There's a link in the description. Go ahead and check those guys out. They help support the show. We uh, we love some flow sports. I will, I will readily admit that. All right. Let's dive back in. The Citrus Bowl is LSU and... Purdue, LSU is a 14 and a half point favorite here. The total sits at 56 over at BetUS. 
This is a Monday, January 2nd game. Uh, later in the in the morning. I think it, it, this might be a noon game. Noon Central. I didn't write down the time like an idiot. It's on ABC. So, check it out. Go watch it. Uh, let's pull up the numbers here. <laughs> Since week eight of the season, I would have LSU, and this is before we have Aiden O'Connell being out of this game, before Jeff Brom left, before uh, all the mayhem at Purdue. My numbers would have LSU favored by 15.76. That's insane. That's crazy. And yet here we are. So, I'll go ahead and tell you that I do like LSU uh, minus the 14 and a half here. I think they're going to be incredibly motivated. I don't think any any amount of Drew Brees being at this game as a quarterback coach or whatever is going to help Purdue in this situation. Uh, Purdue's defense is, is okay. Okay, number 71 defensive PPA per drive since week eight. Um, they are number 50 PPA per pass. Uh, they are number number 80 PPA per rush, and I think that that's where LSU is going to be able to take advantage. Uh, Jaden Daniels, yeah, I know that he was hurt a little bit during the SEC championship game. I think he'll be back healthy for this one. Uh, this is a program builder. Like It's a, moment, uh, excuse me, a momentum builder, a program momentum builder for LSU here. They're number 11 PPA per rush, number three in rushing success rate. Josh Williams is going to be back for this one. Uh, I, I think with them, you know, number five in offensive success rate. You look at Purdue's defense, number 60 in defensive success rate. Uh, there's a huge discrepancy there. I really like what LSU is going to do on offense here. Now, you, and they've got, obviously, average field position advantage is number 28 to uh, Purdue number 80. Like, it's there's a lot of hidden yards that you can come up with here. Points per scoring opportunity as well for LSU's offense, number 13, Purdue number 112. Uh, we move over to Purdue being on offense. Yeah, the LSU defensive numbers are not great, but if you look at who they've played, that's obviously a big part of it. And, and same can be said for Purdue, but you look at the talent differential, and that's certainly a, a big, big part of this. Purdue... Even with Aiden O'Connell in the game, number 89 PPA per pass, number 120 in passing success rate, even though they were, uh, what, over 55% throwing the football. Like, uh, their their passing rate is significantly higher. Uh, but it's not like they were better running the ball either. They were number 105 in PPA per rush, number 69 in rushing success rate. These LSU numbers, I mean, while they're not great, uh, you look at, Defense per drive, number 85 PPA per drive on defense, number 74 PPA per play on defense. At that Purdue offense, number 99 uh, PPA per drive, and number 106 PPA per play on offense. So even though LSU's defense has not been great, I mean, they gave up 50 to Georgia, I don't know that Purdue is going to be able to take advantage here because, one, you're without your quarterback. Two, you're without your offensive play caller. It's kind of an issue. So I, I look at this, I, I see one team that eh, doesn't really care if they win or lose this game, and another one I think that LSU is really going to care about this one. Uh, Brian Kelly does well in bowl games other than other than playoff games. Uh, I think that they're going to be pumped up for this one. They want to go out on a winning note because they lost their last two games. Big spot. Big, big spot here. Uh, I, I think the expectations are high for LSU. Give me the Tigers. Minus the 14 and a half. I will take LSU here. That moves us to the Rose Bowl. And the Rose Bowl, let's try it again. The Rose Bowl has the Utah Utes and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Utah currently a two and a half point favorite. The total sits at 52 over at BetUS. This one's uh, Monday, January 2nd, and it's, you know, it's the same time every year. It, what's funny about this is the fact that the Rose Bowl wanted to talk about tradition, and we do the Rose Parade on January 1st every year, and da 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 But this year's game is going to be on January 2nd. Not the same day as the Rose Parade. Where's the tradition, man? God, it's so irritating. Uh, listening to the constant excuses. It, look. I like the Rose Bowl. I like the location. I like all that. But my God, the politicking going on behind the scenes on that crap was just irritating. This one's on ESPN, as it has been for multiple years, because my God, it's a TV contract. Penn State favored by 4.32 is what I have. Now, Utah is favored by 2.5 per the betting line. But when I look at this, 
these are the numbers based on week eight of the season on through the end. Yeah, I know that Utah played really well against USC. That was a USC with Caleb Williams injured. Um, in this situation, you look at the numbers, and you've got Penn State, number 23, PPA per drive on offense, number 8, PPA per drive on defense. Utah, number 22, PPA per drive on offense, number 22, PPA per drive on defense. At PPA margin, predicted points added margin, Penn State number three in the country from week eight of the season on, Utah number 13. It's it's tough to get that USC Pac-12 championship win out of your head, but you got to. You got to go back and look at the Oregon game for Utah, where they're on the road, etc. Like this Penn State team, other than against Ohio State and Michigan, they were dominant against pretty much everybody else. This Penn State team is good. They have not been to this game in quite some time. And if you remember the last time that they were in a New Year's Six game, it was against Memphis, and they put up, what, 53 points? I think it was Journey Brown's uh, uh, freshman season, if I'm not mistaken. Like, they, they get up for these games. James Franklin does a good job of that. Now, that's not to say that Kyle Whittingham does not. Uh, but you look at what Utah does on offense. Number 79 PPA per pass on offense. They The Penn State defense, number 111. Number 36, passing success rate. Well, Penn State's defense, number 11. But then you move over to running the ball, which is what Utah does more. They run the ball over 53% of the time. Utah, number 5, PPA per rush. Well, Penn State's number 13. Rushing success rate, Utah, number 7. Uh, Penn State, number 18. Penn State's got dudes. Like That's a, a big part of this. Turnover margin, Penn State, number 7. Uh, Utah, number 22. Like Utah gives the ball away more than uh, more than Penn State does. Points per play margin favors Penn State. Net points per drive favors Penn State it, ever so slightly. Um, but you start looking at red zone conversion percentage, and Penn State knows how to finish drives. They just do. You look at points per scoring opportunity, etc. It all points Penn State here. And you look at team strength. That's another one that's going to point towards Penn State. I th I think Utah is the wrong team favorite here. Uh, I know that Utah got there last year. They want to avenge last year's loss to the Big Ten and come in and get a win over Penn State. I, I think this Penn State team is legit. I really do. Give me James Franklin. Give me the Nittany Lions. I like them plus the two and a half here. I think they win the game outright. I really do. All right. That's going to wrap things up for this edition. It is bowl preview number four. I appreciate all of you for rolling through with winning cures everything if you've not already make sure that you are subscribed to the bet us college football show that's where all the best bets are that's where all of my best numbers are i would highly highly recommend and all these are coming out after those are put out anyway but go and check them out bet us it's where the game begins there's a link in the description for that uh go get signed up for bet us you got a 50 dollars free play no deposit required go get signed up they uh they hook you up valtimary surfco as well there's a link in the description for that too and, of course, Flow Sports. I highly recommend you check out all of them. If you've not already, like this video. Make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and, of course, to the podcast. And tell your friends about it, all that good stuff. Jump in the comments. I want to know what your picks are on these games. But with that said, it's time to roll. It's time to get out of here. Uh, I appreciate all of you. I hope that you have all had a Merry Christmas. I hope that you have all, uh, or all will be having a Happy New Year. And with that said, uh, let's, let's dive out of this thing. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully, hopefully, all of your tickets cash this week. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE, and the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.